Hey guys, how's it going? So I have breaking news, and this just broke last night while I was in the middle of live streaming. And thanks to my viewers who sent me links to let me know what's going on while I was busy hanging out with all of you. So the California so-called assault weapons ban has just been deemed unconstitutional by Judge Benitez. And this sounds like great news, and it, it kind of is, and it kind of isn't. So I'm going to go through here this article. Let's switch over to here, and this is going to be actually from Yahoo News. Now, Ammo Land reported on this, but I'm actually going to go with the Yahoo story because, in my opinion, it's a little more thorough, and it has a lot more quotes from the judge's decision, and this is what I'm going to talk about. So, first and foremost, there's a couple things going on here, and on the surface, and maybe the prevailing thing with this case, and it's up for you guys to decide, and I'm going to do my best to explain how this is a great thing in one hand, but there's still some issues here. This is great news on the surface. An assault weapons ban, quote unquote, that's been going on for over 30 years in California has just been deemed unconstitutional. Well, of course, a so-called assault weapons ban. These are semi-autos like the AR and many other things that are certainly, certainly protected by the Second Amendment. And these are rights that were given to you, endowed by your creator. You know, that's what the Declaration of Independence says, right? God, nature's God. These are natural laws. Whatever God or creator means to you. And this is going to be important as I go through here. Look, it's probably better off as a whole that this assault weapons ban, quote unquote, was defeated. But there's some things that Judge Benitez said that I'm not quite happy with. And I'm not trying to be black-pilled, guys. I'm not trying to turn a positive situation into a negative. You know what I'm doing? I'm just being myself like I always am. And you guys can read this news article. And you can read exactly what it says. And you can read the whole court case. But I'm just going to be honest with you guys and give my opinion. And let's go through here. I'm going to give my little critique and opinion of this article and the judge's decision. And there's some good in here, but there's some stuff I don't like so much. And let me know in the comments, you know, what you guys are thinking about this. A federal judge Friday overturned California's three-decade-old ban on assault weapons, ruling that it violates the constitutional right to bear arms. Of course it does, and I couldn't agree more. It goes on to say that U.S. District Judge Roger Benitez of San Diego, he's ruled a lot on Second Amendment cases, by the way. He's considered to be one of the good guys. He's considered to be one of the best we have. Not quite good enough for me, though, but let me continue. Rule that the state's definition of illegal military-style rifles unlawfully deprives law-abiding Californians of weapons commonly allowed in most other states and by the U.S. Supreme Court. Sounds great, except for guess what? The Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's it. That's what it says. And that's so clear-cut. I don't understand how there's all these interpretations, even by pro-Second Amendment judges. It doesn't say anything about the right to keep and bear commonly available firearms. Find that anywhere in the Second Amendment. It's just not there. So we're already starting off. Commonly allowed in most other states and by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court did not give you your right to keep and bear arms. Those are endowed by your creator and protected by the Second Amendment from infringement by government, but they're giving the Supreme Court credit, it looks like, for the people's rights in California to keep and bear arms. We'll continue because, look, he's better than the Attorney General and he's better than the Governor of California. It says, under no level of heightened scrutiny can the law survive, Benitez said. He issued a permanent injunction against enforcement of the law, but stayed at 30 days to give Attorney General Rob Bonta time to appeal. So he said it's unconstitutional, but he stayed. That means put a pause on his own ruling. So it's deemed unconstitutional, but not for another 30 days. So he can give the enemy, the person that's trying to deprive Californians of almost all of their firearms, he's giving him 30 days to appeal. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know if he has to do that or if he chose to do that. You guys can chime in if there's some kind of 3D chess with that. But 
if it's unconstitutional right now, and no doubt it always has been, even before this country was formed, it violated natural laws and laws of nature and of nature's God. But let's give the enemy that's trying to take essentially all of your guns 30 days to appeal it. That's what the judge did. Governor Gavin Newsom, let's see what he said, condemned the decision, calling it a direct threat to public safety and the lives of innocent Californians, period. Now, that's obviously, you know, a message from someone who, in my opinion, is a tyrannical governor. So, again, there's a lot worse than Benitez out there, but, eh, Benitez, he doesn't see the Constitution the way I do. I don't think he understands natural rights the way the Founding Fathers did. Let's continue. You guys can make up your mind for yourself. In his 94-page ruling, the judge spoke favorably of modern weapons, said they're overwhelmingly used for legal reasons. Okay, we agree. I favorable of those and they are used for legal reasons but that's a whole nother rabbit hole i don't want to get into look shall not be infringed if they make an unconstitutional law right is it just to still use the arms or not let me know what you guys think in the comments there's a lot of stuff here benitez goes on to say like the swiss army knife the popular ar-15 rifle is a perfect combination of home defense weapon and homeland defense equipment Good for both home and battle, the judge said in his ruling introduction. I agree with that. It's a very versatile weapon, no doubt. Even though I'm an AK guy, AR, hey, good for all of these things. And then he says, the, then they go on to say the comparison. This is Newsom. Quote, completely undermines the credibility of his decision and is as a slap in the face to the families who's lost loved ones to this weapon. Newsom said in a statement, we're not backing down from this fight. We'll continue pushing for common sense gun laws that will save lives. So typical Democrat using the emotional appeal, even though we all know that guns save more lives than they quote unquote take and guns don't take any lives or save lives. It's good people are going to use a firearm, a tool to save good lives and bad people. Well, they're going to do bad things with a tool, whether it's a firearm or anything else. So, of course, I completely disagree with Newsom, and I think most of you do. Here's Bonta, the Attorney General, called the ruling flawed and said it will be appealed. So, he's going to appeal it, and the judge gave him plenty of time to do so. Goes on to say they first restricted these so-called assault weapons. Not my word. I'm just using the parlance in the case, guys. In 1989, with multiple updates since then. They go on to define what an assault weapon is, blah, blah, blah. Then they go on to say the fact that Californians were able to buy 1.16 million of other types of pistols and rifles and shotguns last year means that they basically can get plenty of weapons. That's what they need. That's what the state of California is saying, the attorney general. Again, completely disagree with everything he's saying. And they're talking about how similar quote-unquote assault weapons restrictions have been previously upheld by six other federal district courts. Look, this is the other side, and I disagree. And it goes on to say, Benitez also disagreed. Now, here's the problem with Benitez. Guys, look, I'm not trying to black pill a positive situation. And if you guys are happy about this, that's okay with me. And I'm happy about it, kind of. But we're going to go right here into some more stuff that I actually disagree with Benitez on. Although I disagree with Newsom and Bonta way more, I, I highly, completely disagree with them more. But they can be, like, really bad. And Benitez still not getting what the Second Amendment truly protects too? Just my opinion. Both can be occurring at the same time. And while I'm completely disgusted with what they're saying, I'm actually kind of disgusted with what Benitez is about to say too. Here's a quote. Benitez disagreed. This case is not about extraordinary weapons lying at the outer limits of the Second Amendment protection. Excuse me? Shall not be infringed, Benitez. That's what I would tell him if I was talking to him right now outer limits i don't even understand that shall not be infringed is so clear and concise there is no outer limits period end of story but he's now drawing distinctions of what the outer limits are in our he says he continues benitez the banned quote assault weapons are not bazookas howitzers or machine guns those arms are dangerous and solely useful for military purposes his ruling said and what benitez just did well he quote Saved the Second Amendment, people are going to say. And look, he's better than Newsom and Bonta. I'm going to emphasize that one more time. He actually just cemented in even more. 
that even in his opinion, and he's supposed to be one of the good guys, one of the best we've got in the federal court system, he even says that the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed doesn't include bazookas, howitzers, or machine guns. Now, in my opinion, the Second Amendment was put there to not only protect us from foreign invaders, but it was also there to protect from a tyrannical government. You know, Federalist Paper 51 talks about how we need internal checks. It literally says right here, it talks about if the government... If, if no government would be necessary if men were angels. So we need a government. But it says if angels were to govern man, neither external nor internal controls on government would be necessary. But as we know, the government is not angels. And it goes on at the end of Federalist 51. And it says a dependence on the people is no doubt the primary control on government. But experience has taught mankind the necessity of auxiliary precautions. And that's what the Second Amendment is. And that's what a well-regulated militia is. These are these checks on government that if it were to become tyrannical, the people could check it. And that's what the Founding Fathers believed. Now, if the United States military, the government, has bazookas, howitzers, and machine guns, how could the people's militia possibly keep and bear arms for the security of a free state? This is against enemies foreign and domestic. That's what the Founding Fathers said, right? How could we possibly protect... This grand experiment on self-governance. This republic, if we can keep it, like Ben Franklin said. Even this pro-gun judge, he doesn't want us to have bazookas, howitzers, or machine guns. He says those are dangerous and solely useful for military purposes. Actually, that's not what the Second Amendment says. That's not what the Declaration of Independence says. See, the Declaration of Independence was the outline on how to abolish a tyrannical government. And the Second Amendment was put there to see that we would not be infringed upon our natural rights and that we would have the physical tools necessary to do so if necessary. This is nothing I'm making up. This is literally what the country was founded upon. I'm not as highly educated as a judge. I have barely any college education, but I don't know. There's something the judge isn't understanding about Federalist Paper 51, the Declaration of Independence, the Second Amendment, in my opinion. I know some of you guys aren't going to like this video because you're like, excuse me? Just don't, don't think for one minute that I'm... Look, it wouldn't be good if also the assault weapons ban stood. Like, I'm trying to talk about two things at once. Yes, it's good. He said the assault weapons ban is unconstitutional. Allowed the enemy of the people plenty of time to appeal it, though. And now he's saying the Second Amendment doesn't protect. This is not about extraordinary weapons, he says. The banned assault weapons are not bazookas, howitzers, or machine guns. Those arms are dangerous and solely useful for military purposes. Am I the only one that has a problem with that? Let me know down in the comments. If I'm the only one, let me know that too. That's okay. We can disagree on this stuff, but I disagree with the judge a lot. And there's some things he says that I do agree with, okay? And then he goes on to say, despite California's ban, there currently is estimated 185,569 quote-unquote assault weapons registered in the state. Goes on to say, this is an average case about average guns used in average ways for average purposes, the ruling said. That may be true, but the Second Amendment doesn't cover the average. We're not supposed to be mob rule. These are certain unalienable rights, aren't they? Yeah, weren't given by government. It seems like the judge might look at it a different way. And then he says, one is to be forgiven if one is persuaded by news media and others that the nation is awash with murderous AR-15 assault rifles. The facts, however, do not support this hyperbole. Hyperbole and facts matter. I agree with him on that. There's lots of hyperbole. And this is another good fact that he brought up. There's some good stuff in here, even though I don't think this judge understands what this country was formed under. And he doesn't understand the Second Amendment or Declaration. But he is right in this. He says, in California, murder by knife occurs seven times more often than murder by rifle. Yeah, that's astounding. And that is an important fact to talk about. He goes on to say in a preliminary ruling that there's these complicated web of assault definitions and weapons and what they are, and it actually traps a lot of otherwise law-abiding gun owners. The Second Amendment doesn't say anything about the law-abiding gun owner, actually. Try to find that in there. It's not there either, but I digress. There's a lot of rabbit holes, and I'm going to try to keep this brief as I can. So he says it's basically can strip them of their Second Amendment right to own firearms. Excuse me? Their Second Amendment right 
The Second Amendment doesn't say in there the federal government or the Second Amendment gives you the right to keep and bear arms. No, no. Look at the Declaration of Independence that was written about 15 years before the Second Amendment. It says, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed in the Second Amendment. And then it says in the Declaration of Independence who gives you your rights. It's very clear. Now that's a personal choice who you believe your creator is. But it's who created you. And the Founding Fathers didn't create you. And neither did Judge Benitez or any of these politicians in California. But he says right here that strip them of their Second Amendment right to own firearms. No, these are natural rights. And the Second Amendment is a prohibition on government from infringing on a right that predated the Second Amendment, it predated 1776, and it predated this whole country, and the Founding Fathers knew that. And it appears, by the plain reading of his quote, that Judge Benitez may not understand that. I don't want to speak for him. I'm just giving you the opinion that I'm concluding by reading his quote. He goes on to say, The burden on the core Second Amendment right, if any, is minimal. The state argued. I'm sorry, that's the state arguing that. Look, there is no such thing as minimal shall not be infringed if you move one inch over the line if you move one scintilla over the line it's instantly unconstitutional and if people want to go by what courts say look our rights predated any courts but if you want to look at this in the court sphere judge benitez look at marbury v madison right any laws that are contrary or repugnant to the constitution are null and void the constitution says shall not be infringed so of course, any gun control laws should be null and void. Literally, the Supreme Court themselves actually said that. <clears throat> so it goes on to say that several different lawsuits that were ruled victor victorious by Benitez, such as this magazine ban, um, certain background checks for ammunition, those are all being appealed as we speak. And that's the way things work. There's appeals processes, all of these things. So yes, it's a huge victory in one aspect, saying that the California, over three decades, this assault weapons ban, it's over now. Okay, that's a victory in and of itself in a bubble. But then this judge goes on to talk about how machine guns and bazookas and handheld things like that, those, no. Hmm. He also doesn't talk about it being a natural right. He says it's a Second Amendment right. I'm not trying to parse words here, but... There's a distinction, and you know what's crazy? That's what the topic of my last stream, it was just last night, Friday night. If you guys are bored, you can go back and watch. That was the topic of my stream, actually. And this news broke while I was streaming, so I'm either clairvoyant or it was just sheer luck. Probably just sheer luck, because I'm not psychic at all. It's kind of crazy. That's literally what I was talking about. Now we have a judge in this huge Second Amendment victory. It's actually saying the exact opposite of what I believe to be true. So, one more time, let me reiterate. Yes, there was a victory here, but he just cemented in even more. Many, quote, pro-gun judges have done this. Scalia actually talked about common use and all that in the Heller decision, actually. Now, I don't. I'm glad we, quote, won Heller. I'm glad for the people in California and these United States of America that they, quote, won this in one hand, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't think this judge gets it. And I'm not happy with that. And I think both things can be going on at once. But I wanted to call this out. And I'm probably, maybe, one of the only gun channels that's really going to give you this angle. And I'm just being honest with you guys and giving my opinion. I'm not happy with all the stuff that the judge put in this opinion. But I would be much less happy if the state, if the attorney general would have won and upheld this ban. What are you guys thinking? Let me know out in the comments. Can both be true at once? What's the prevailing argument? Is it good that we won at the expense of this judge actually saying things that, in my opinion, are completely contrary to the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence? Completely contrary, actually, to Marbury v. Madison. He says that these machine guns wouldn't have qualified. Look. If there's even one infringement, the way the Second Amendment's written, or if one person's prohibited, it's no longer a right because everybody has to have it for it to be a right. As soon as you start segregating things and saying, well, you can have this but not that, or this person, that person, all these things, 
Is that a privilege or is that a right? Is this judge just willing to actually grant you more privileges than the Attorney General of California and Governor Newsom? Or is this judge actually standing up for your natural rights that were endowed by your creator? Or is he just trying to pick and choose some of them but not others? You guys can read the article for yourselves. I'm going to leave a link down in the description. I'm happy. <laughs> But I'm not so happy at the same time. And it seems like that's the struggle that we're going through a lot right now. People like me that are constitutional purists that believe what it says is what it says. And it means exactly what it means. And I believe these founding documents are beautiful things. And I don't think these judges are any smarter than the founding fathers. And I wish they just humble themselves to literally read what it says. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And that includes, in my opinion, machine guns, howitzers, bazookas, and much more. Because the founding fathers didn't say accept artillery or accept this or accept that. Very clearly, just shall not be infringed. And that was this great experiment on self-governance. And this judge apparently believes in some of it, but not all of it. All right, guys, I got a lot of work to do today, so... Let me know. Let me know down in the comments. You guys can disagree with me all you want, and that's totally fine. Maybe you guys agree with me. But either way, I just wanted to go through and give my opinion on this. All right, thanks for watching, and have a good one.